Welcome, and thank you for joining us for this Integrated Arts lesson. I'm Jordan, and I'd like to share with you how to integrate art into your social studies classroom. For this lesson, students will make a personal connection to an aspect of Native American culture, totem poles, and spirit animals. They will do this by researching how some Native cultures incorporate animals into their art making. Our students will make this connection by creating a spirit animal mask. They'll identify personal characteristics and connect those to an animal and make them into a mask such as this one. This lesson was developed for a sixth grade social studies class. However, it can be adapted for an English language arts class or a social emotional lesson. To create this lesson in your classroom, you'll need the following materials. Hot glue guns, hot glue sticks, a variety of different colored construction paper, scratch paper, scissors, pencils, and then the masks themselves. Step one. Before beginning the mask making, you'll want to ask students to identify personal character strengths. They'll also want to do some research on Native American cultures. It's important to remember that the personality traits should be character traits and not physical attributes. Students may also want to do some research on character traits and their connection to specific animals. This will help them choose an animal that best matches their own strengths. This animal is the animal that they will choose to make their mask out of. Now we'll take some time to brainstorm some of your own strengths. It may be helpful to encourage students to think of at least three, but no more than five. Students, can you please share your own personal strengths that you identified? Uh, athletic, funny, smart. I said kind, strong, understanding, and loving. See how our students chose character strengths and not physical attributes. They did a great job. Before moving on, our students will now make a connection between their own characteristics and an animal that they associate with them. You can now take some time to brainstorm an animal that matches your own strengths. Students, can you now tell us about the animal you chose and how you chose it? I chose a wolf because they're athletic and they're pretty smart. Awesome. I chose an eagle because they're strong animals who live within other animals. Awesome. Step two, students will each be given a plastic mask. They will use manipulated paper in order to decorate it to look like their chosen animal. In order to manipulate the paper, a variety of techniques can be used. Some of the techniques could be to cut the paper into different strips. This can mimic fur. Another technique that can be used it's a feathering technique where you cut the paper at an angle. You can then come and cut it at an angle at the opposite side. Now as you can see, this creates a feather-like illusion. Other options could be rolling the paper. It can also be done long ways. Students may want to reference their research on Native American cultures and art making in order to gain additional insight into color usage and color meaning, as well as shapes that are traditionally used. Our students can now begin cutting and selecting their paper. Prior to beginning your project, you'll want to show your students a couple of different techniques for how to create the nose and ears of the animals they've chosen. While these are not the only techniques available and students are welcome to figure out their own way to create the nose and ears, these are a few examples. One way to create the beak for your bird is to create a triangular shape. You can make this large or small depending on the type of bird you've chosen. You'll then want to come up and create two rounded shapes on either side. These will be flaps and they'll go over the front of your mask. For an animal that has a snout, you'll want to create a long rectangle with one end larger than the other. Again, depending on the animal that you've chosen, the snout might be larger or smaller. You will want to round the snout around the front of the mask covering the nose. This will create the illusion of a snout. For the ears, there are two ways you could do this. One way that we did it was we created a small rectangle as a base. 
and then you'll build your ear above that. And it could be a rounded ear, or it could be a pointed ear, depending on your animal. You'll want to bend the top portion so that the rectangle pops the ear up. You'll glue the rectangle to the top of your mask so the ear is sticking straight up above it. Another option could just be to create a version of your ear and to round it and glue it above your mask. Step four, now that our students have finished their masks, we had them write a paragraph describing how the characteristics of their spirit animal connect to their own characteristics. To conclude our project, we had our students present these paragraphs as a monologue with their mask. However, you can choose whether or not you want to incorporate this as an ending as well. Step five, for the installation, we chose to put all of the masks from one class together. This was taking individual differences and uniting them together to show the unity of our class. We put them together on a homemade totem pole that was covered with butcher paper to give the illusion that these were animals stacked in a totem pole figure. While we chose to put all of our masks together and to put them on a totem pole, you can choose to install them however you feel is best for your class. Students, you can now share your masks. Thank you for viewing our lesson on animal masks. Here are a few examples that students have created. We hope this lesson will inspire you to use art in your classroom and increase student self-expression and engagement. If you'd like to download copies of this lesson plan or view other helpful resources, please visit our website at svmoa.org. You won't want to miss our other videos that integrate art into math, science, social studies, and English. This project is made possible by a grant from the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services and with the additional support from Wendy and Alan Pesky.